It's time now to take a look at this week's headline making stories in our Reporters Rewind. Our guests at the round table are South African freelance journalist Sarusha Govinder and Milton Alamadi is the publisher and editor in chief at the Black Star News. And finally, freelance journalist Nicholas Niarcos is to my left. Welcome all of you. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. back to all of you. You've always you. all been at this table before. I want to start with this tragic shooting at the hands, allegedly at the hands of Elliot Roger, this uh, isolated uh, young man who clearly had mental illness, uh, set out to get revenge for his lack of a social life, yeah. and as we all know, stabbed his three roommates and then killed three other people in a shooting yeah. rampage. My, my question, or what I'd like for us to discuss is, as journalists, do we somehow get it wrong by making these mass shooters infamous by you know, mining through their background, telling their life story. We make them famous, and sometimes that's what they're going for, don't you think? Well, I, th I, th I think the operative word there is sometimes. I, I, I don't think we can account for a co all mass shootings um, you know, in terms of uh, people wanting to make themselves famous. Sometimes there's a um, fascination with weaponry, regalia, war stories. So I, I'm not sure if we can necessarily draw that causal link between um, you know, someone wanting to become famous, infamous, um, and, and, and them going out to, to, to shoot people. I think that what's needed is kind of um, clear-headed, um, thorough reporting that looks at the causes of these things and doesn't obviously um, make them into sort of famous or celebrity type figures. No, I agree completely. You see that as, as these things get reported on initially, um, it snowballs into these bigger stories. And then you get good reporting and bad reporting. And good reporting we've seen come out of these mass shootings is bringing up the big issues, again, of gun violence. And particularly in this case, misogyny and, you know, the yes, all women hashtag and all the violence right. against women that these acts, a lot of these acts involve. Those are important points that the media is, is tasked with bringing up, is tasked with discussing. It is unfortunate that the smaller media or the, some other media will also sort of cotton on to this and, you know, exploit certain factors. But we can't say all media shouldn't report at all on these. Yeah, it's really tough when it's a shooting like this, a lot of people dead. It's, I don't see how, uh, you know, it's important to put it in some context, but in the, when you're on deadline, you want the story for the next day, and that establishes the right. tone, unfortunately, the initial reporting. But uh, in, in, in this young man's situation, I'm thinking, like, how many young uh, people, young men, are in that kind of situation right now? So I'm very concerned, actually. And then when it comes to mental illness, I think we're getting to that stage where we may need a national conversation on mental illness. Oh, I think you're more than right uh, on that. But, you know, I, I draw my question from, um, and I, I'm sorry, I cannot remember her name, but she lost her son and her father in the shooting, in the anti-Semitic shooting in, in the Kansas City area. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we interviewed her, she refused to say the name mm -hmm. of the shooter. She mm -hmm. only wanted to focus on her family. And Absolutely. I thought, you know, there's a certain right. dignity to that. And there's, a, to right. me, a, a certain... Um, it's true rationale to that. Absolutely. Why should we focus on the perpetrator of the right. crime right. instead of the, pe the victims, the right. people who and lost now, their lives? We saw in uh, Elliot's case when the shooter actually posts on, online, on, on YouTube, uh, statements like that. I think that's uh, going to become an increasing trend as well. And that also drives the quality or lack of quality of the coverage that and, and here's the thing, I challenge any of you, we can all say the, the alleged shooter's name, name that, give me a name of any of the other victims. Mm -hmm. And there were six. You know, and so that's an interesting point. We always focus on uh, that. Well, we're almost out of town, but let's talk a little bit about uh, Edward Snowden. He granted a big, uh, highly hyped uh, interview this week to uh, NBC News anchor Brian Williams. Uh, and I'm just wondering, are you over Snowden? I know, Sarusha, you watched some of it. Did mm -hmm. you change your opinion? Did you learn anything? I think that interview was so overhyped. It was almost comical the way it was played out, like a big look at what Snowden really has to say. And I think people still really want to know really what he thinks and really what he says and I don't think we got any of that from this interview it seemed almost by rote it seemed like Brian Williams didn't push him at all um, it, and he had lots of caveats in between where he said well Snowden actually did this and meant that but he didn't say it in the actual interview he didn't call him on questions he didn't answer so I was just left feeling really unsatisfied and a little bit led on mm. by by the coverage we just have a few right. seconds go ahead Milton. okay well I can say this I think 
the tide has changed a little. There was a time where everybody wanted to talk about Lynch, this character. I think when you now have him doing prime time interview like this, mm. it shows us how far we've pushed from that initial situation. And finally, Nicholas. Well, I, I mean, I mean, I think uh, the, the fact that, that he's still releasing information makes him a relevant figure um, in, in in all of our lives. True. Um, and I, I think that you know there are still many things about the NSA that I want to know. Um, uh, I. I I'd, I'm not sure if I find Edward Snowden himself particularly fascinating, but his information is um, is definitely something. I think that we you should make a good point. At. I think the government also wants to know how much more he. Has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't know what the ratings were for that interview, but uh, I'd be curious to know. We'll have to leave it right uh, right there. Sarusha Govinder, Milton Alamani. Thank you, Zalman. Thank you so much. Good to see all of you. Thanks. Have a good weekend. And you're watching Arise America.